Hello and welcome to Normalization Overview, part of the course Database Fundamentals using Visual Studio 2013. I'm Mark Benison, College Lecturer of Computer Science, and in this session we'll be looking at just one example of a straightforward normalization to third normal form. First we should understand the system, and the example I will use for this is the fictitious Benny's Bar Cafe Lounge. This will provide us a context for further work on the data analysis and database design. I will assume a simplistic logon form that uh, will allow administrators and managers access to a menu of reports and user management options, or allow the cafe baristas direct access to the ordering system. Now, I'm not too worried about the aesthetics too much for my example. I'm going for ease of implementation rather than ease of use. On this screen here, we have the items available on the left with descriptions, prices, and an add button. A search facility might be used to help us demonstrate the, uh, a query uh, that the user can adjust at runtime. On the right hand side, we then have the items that make up the order. We can assume this to be empty at the start, and uh, we have the option to add items and process and cancel the orders, and have some further order data such as barista or user at the top left, date time at the top center, and transaction number at the top right. Looking at the navigation structure, from the logon, uh, a user will be, able to direct a, a bit, will be able to be directed to the ordering system. Uh, directly or uh, an admin menu uh, depending on their privileges. On the ordering system we can add and remove items from the order or choose to process or cancel our order as mentioned. An administrator can also have access to the ordering system or they could choose the user management form, stock adjustments or sales reports uh, that we can look at in more detail at a later time. The system proposed here is designed to give us an introduction to some database design and implementation techniques and not as a commercially viable system with full authentication or robust audit tracking etc etc. Now we're going to run through normalization to third normal form for Benny's Bar. I think normalization can be a bit tricky to get your head around and the example I'm providing is stripped of some additional data that will likely be needed in such a system. I may in future deliver a more detailed overview of normalization covering further examples and demonstrations to third normal form. Let's start with unnormalized form. It's handy to start with a typical report that displays a range of data. For any ordering system, the receipt or invoice is a good place to begin. We would likely need to uh, add more data attributes such as staff information, their address, pay rate, contract at our start date, and for some ordering systems you might need stock levels or supplier information, though this is, isn't really relevant for what we're trying to achieve today. Uh, I have a typ typical receipt here. Uh, we start by identifying all the attributes, removing any calculated fields. So here is the transaction number. And then we can go through and find Barista number, the Barista forename and surname, the quantity, the item's code, the description, the price, and a line price. Now the line price being a quantity multiplier, being the quantity multiplied by the item price, is a calculated field. So I'm not going to actually store this in the database, so I'm going to skip over that. Total price, totaling the line prices that I just mentioned, are, is also a calculated field. So rather than store this, I can calculate it every time I need it. Uh, so I'm going to leave that out, and I can move straight on to date and time, uh, the orders being processed. Date and time can be one field in this case. It is nice to identify a primary key for one invoice or one transaction in this case, and we have one available, the transaction number. If one did not exist, then of course we could create one. It's also a good time to highlight the repeating groups. Uh, this will just prepare us for first normal form and isn't really essential for unnormalized data. Repeating data can be identified as any heading on tables within the report. In this example, the item data, ordered quantity, uh, item code and description, and price are all repeating groups. If you're not working with a report like this, perhaps you have a spreadsheet of data, then repeating data is where you find a need to, uh, for multiple columns to display variants on the same information, such as item 1, item 2, and item 3, or a single column containing multiple values that should probably be isolated. 
such as how many ingredients are being used. Essentially, if you need to have more than one column for the same kind of data, uh, you, you'll have to separate that out onto rows, and therefore you'll have repeating groups. That's our unnormalized form. We can now step into first normal form. The intention here is to remove any repeating fields and attain atomic values. I advise you to look into more detail about what these terms mean. For a report like an invoice, you can assume any subtable is likely to contain those repeating groups that we've mentioned. We will form additional entities for each group of repeating values. We only have one group of repeating values, one subtable if you like. Uh, here we have quantity, item code, description and price all needing to be extracted. We must also copy the primary key from the original table. Having this field in both tables allows them to link together. But we can't have both tables use the same primary key or else they may as well be one table. So we must also identify another primary key and together they are known as a composite key. Our second half to a composite key here is the item code as together they identify an item on a particular order where no order will have an item code duplicated. If someone orders more than one at any time the quantity is changed instead of adding a new line. This is first normal form. Second normal form we're looking to remove those part key dependents. We're only concerned with entities with composite keys, so the original table ha having only one key is left as it is. In the second entity, we're looking for any attribute that is dependent upon one of the primary keys. The item's description and price are linked directly to the item code, so they are dependent of the item code. Quantity is dependent on both the item code and transaction number, so it will remain in this entity. We remove those part key dependents, making a copy of the key they are dependent upon, the item code. Having this item code in both tables ensures they remain linked together. This is second normal form. Third normal form is to remove non-key dependents. These are attributes that are dependent upon another non-key. In this example, we only have Barista's forename and surname fields, which are dependent on the barista number. They will be removed. And again, we must copy an attribute. But this attribute will only be a primary key in the newer entity. We refer to the non-key version as a foreign key because it relates to a primary key in another table. So here we have a quick overview of normalization to third normal form. There are more levels to normalization that are out of the scope of this tutorial. We can write our entities using singular titles, often in capitals. Transaction, barista, transaction item, and item. The attributes usually written in brackets with primary keys underlined, as shown on the left here. In a conceptual data model, we, are cons we concern ourselves only with these entities and their relationships. Without going into greater detail on the background to relations here, each table is related to, to one another using those shared attributes. The barista number is present in both barista and transaction entities. So there is a one-to-many relation where the foreign key is the many side of that relation. Transaction items has a composite key on transaction number and item codes that are primary keys in the item and transaction entities. As the items are essentially created in these other entities, the composite keys are both primary and foreign in the transaction item. Therefore, they are the many side to of their relations. To recap, a barista can process many transactions. A transaction can only be processed by one barista, but can have many transaction items. An item line in the invoice is a transaction item. It links one transaction to one item. An item can appear on many of these lines, i.e. an item can be on many transactions. The normalization process uh, actually created transaction item as a link table between two tables with a many-to-many -many relation. Transactions have many items and items appear on many transactions. As this cannot be represented uh, in a database, 
we have a linked table, a one-to-many, many-to-one. Thank you very much for listening.